Hi students, this is Ms. Shem. Uh, in this video, I'll be going over the AP Biology course and exam description, okay? All right, let me go ahead and share my screen because there is a presentation that's gonna guide us through this uh, video. All right. Okay, so... All right, this is a screenshot of the College Board's AP Biology course and exam description. Um, it is a PDF. It's a document that is available to you on the College Board website. Um, first of all, before we go into the course and exam description, you might be wondering, what is the College Board? Like, who are they? Um, basically, it is a, a nonprofit organization that works with 6,000 um, different universities and colleges, and they basically consult universities and colleges, and they ask them, um, they ask these colleges, like, what do you want high schoolers to know? What, do, what sort of skills do you want high schoolers to have before they um, go to college? And so the College Board, uh, they are the people, they are the organization that makes exams. They make, uh, they make the PSAT. I'm sure you've heard of the SAT. So the College Board, they make the PSAT, they make SATs, and they also make all AP exams. So they have specifically made the AP biology exam by consulting college professors of biology, asking them, what would you like high school, high school biology students to know? And so this class, AP Biology, is a college level class that they have developed based on um, the feedback that they've received from universities. OK, so this class is basically for high school students, but the the difficulty level is equivalent to an introductory biology class at a university. OK, and so that's why if you pass the AP exam, which will be taken in May, which you'll take in May, if you pass it, that will give you college credit because the, you know, the course is designed um, for or designed at the level of introductory biology at a university. Okay, so let's go over AP biology exam um, course and exam description, which is um, published by the College Board. Okay. So first of all, um, the course framework, it includes two essential components. Okay, there's basically two main parts of this course that uh, colleges would like for you to grasp. Okay, there are science practices, and there are six science practices that are central uh, to the study and practice of biology. This is what you're going to be doing in the class. Okay, this is how you're going to think. Uh, they want you to think like a scientist. They want you to be able to practice and demonstrate what scientists do on a daily basis in the laboratory. And then the second part of this class is the course content. Um, the course content is basically the knowledge, okay? The knowledge of biology, everything that you need to know about biology, okay? From like cells to mitosis to DNA, RNA, um, ecology, evolution, that's the course content. Okay, so the science practice is more like what you do in the class, how you think in the class, and the course contents is the knowledge, this biology um, foundation, the knowledge. Okay, so let's just quickly go over the science practices. Um, hopefully this video is not going to be too long because I'm just going to do a really quick overview of the CED. So CED is the acronym for course exam um, course sorry, course exam description, okay? All right, so science practice one, and I said that there are six science practices. The first one is just concept explanation. You know, again, this is doing, right? Can you explain some of the biological concepts that you've learned in this class? Science practice two, visual representation. Are you able to analyze visual representation of concepts and processes? Like when, can, when you look at a diagram of maybe um, negative feedback or positive feedback, are you able to describe how that process works to maintain homeostasis? Okay. Um, science practice number three, questions and methods. Determine scientific questions and methods. You know, in our class, we're going to be doing a lot of experimentation. I mean, really experiments is, you know, it's such a, important part of biology, right? Thinking like a scientist. And so you'll be doing a lot of experimentation where you're gonna be asking questions and then you're gonna develop methods of um, um, what sort of methodology you're going to do in your experiment. So 
you will be designing a lot of experiments in this class. And in that designing process, you'll be looking at the question that you're trying to answer. And from, from that, you're going to develop methodology. You're going to develop steps. You're going to produce um, a valid experiment that's going to test your hypothesis and answer your scientific question. I think I'm making it sound a little bit more complicated than it is. It's, it's not that complicated. Okay. Represent, uh, representing, oops, sorry, before I post that. Okay. Representing and describing data. Okay. Um, again, in an experiment, you're going to get results, right? You're going to get results. And so when you look at the results, you need to be able to represent it in a graph. Okay. That's what scientists do. So can you, can you represent your data in a graph? Can you describe what's going on in a graph? Okay, so that's science practice number four. And then science practice number five uh, is statistical tests and data analysis. So when you look at the data, when you look at the end results of your experiment, and you're looking at these numbers, you're looking at the data, you need to analyze the data. Does my data support my hypothesis? Does it answer the question? Does it support the hypothesis? And so there are some statistical ways that we can analyze the data. So like, for example, if you look down here, it says um, perform chi-score hypothesis testing. So one um, sort of statistical way of analyzing data is a chi-square analysis. So you guys will learn um, not so much this semester, but in, in the second semester. The last science practice is argumentation, okay? In argumentation, um, you'll see, you'll have to be able to show science practice number six or argumentation in free response or essay questions. Okay. Like, can you make a claim and back it up with evidence? You know, make a claim, a scientific claim, and you need to support your claim with evidence. And the evidence can be in the form of biological concepts that you learn in the class, or it could be based on data that you, um, you are given or data, uh, from your experiment. Okay. So those are the six science practices, and we're going to move on now to uh, the next part, okay, course content. So course content, there are four big ideas, but these four big ideas are chopped up into smaller units, and so there's eight, okay, there's eight units that we will be um, going over this year, okay, but the four big ideas, the first one is evolution, okay, okay. Um, basically stating that evolution uh, is the process where organisms change over a long period of time due to uh, natural selection, okay? Natural selection is the driving force that causes change, um, genetic change in organisms over time, okay? And then the next big idea is going to be uh, energetics. You know, um, biological systems use energy, Right. And um, we need energy to grow, to reproduce and to maintain homeostasis. So what are some of those processes that require energy and how do they use energy to grow, reproduce and maintain homeostasis? OK, and then the third uh, big idea is information storage and transmission. So, you know, this has to do with genetics. OK, um, how do living systems store like in your DNA, retrieve, transmit? and respond to information essential to life um, processes. And then the last big idea is system interactions. Biological systems interact, okay? Uh, so like, if, for example, when we go over ecology, how do all the different organisms in the ecosystem interact with each other in such a way that, um, you know, that uh, shows resiliency and flexibility to tolerate any sort of change in the environment? Okay, and like I said, those big four, those four big ideas are actually going to be divided into eight units. Okay, so unit one is chemistry of life, unit two is cell structure and function, unit three is cellular energetics, unit four is cell communication and the cell cycle, so unit five is heredity, number six is gene expression and regulation, seven is natural selection, and then the last unit is ecology. Okay, and so these units are going to be addressed in your textbook. Your textbook, um, which you should have now, is a pretty big textbook. We will we will not be going over every single chapter 
Okay, thankfully, but we will going we'll be going over the majority of the chapters, and the reason being is because uh, majority of these chapters are addressed in these units. So it's very important that you do reading from the textbook. Really utilize the textbook because the textbook does a great job of giving you background knowledge and foundational information that's really going to help you have a good grasp of the content in this class. Okay, so just an example. Um, unit one is chemistry of life. Um, and so in unit one, chemistry of life, it's divided into six different sections, structure of water and hydrogen bonding, elements of life, intro to biological macromolecules, uh, properties of biological macromolecules, structure and function of these biological macromolecules, and then lastly, nucleic acids. Seems like a lot of information, um, but uh, it's just a few chapters, okay? So for example, um, unit one, uh, section one is structure of water and hydrogen bonding. That's chapter three in your textbook. And then elements of life, that's chapter four in your textbook. And then the last um, is chapter five in your textbook. So those last uh, four um, uh, things that you need to know in this unit, those four standards that you need to know in this unit are in chapter five in your textbook. So we are gonna be going through a majority of the chapters in your textbook because um, they are addressed uh, in the course content, okay? But and again, I really encourage you to read your textbook. We're going to be going over the most important information in class, but it, the textbook gives you just um, such a good description, foundational information um, that will help you grasp the information in class, okay? So I hope that this video um, kind of gave you a good idea of what this course is going to be about. Uh, it really is about two things, right? It's about the science practices, thinking like a scientist, demonstrating science skills. And then the second thing is really the content knowledge, which I absolutely love, okay? I, that's, why, that's why I am a biology teacher. I love AP biology because of the content. Um, I just think that biology is amazing, right? We're gonna be uh, learning about living things um, and living things are just so amazing. Like right now I'm looking out the window and there is a butterfly. Um, and so- <laughs> Just, it's amazing, okay? So I hope that, you know, your enthusiasm for biology uh, will increase due to the course. Uh, that would be my ultimate desire is that you would have a passion for biology after this course, okay? All right, uh, I look forward to getting to know you guys and I will see you soon, bye.